So I wanted to create a bean kit that has indigenous representation, something that we can wear. Um, and so I decided to do the medicine wheel. So the medicine wheel represents having finding a balance within your spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional self. Um, and it the concept goes to talk about how you can't take too much from one um, one area of your body without seeing effects in other areas. So you always have to find that balance and one example that I always think of um, is it within the environment. So we see in some areas where there are trees are being taken away, they're over extracting the trees in one area and those trees have a place. Those trees hold down the earth, the ground and where we are seeing mudslides a lot is where those trees are being taken away so we all and that kind of goes to show that you can't take too much from one aspect without seeing effects in others and yeah there's lots of stories on the medicine wheel and i love listening to them but that's just kind of my my little example that i that i always think of so let's get started so these are the little kits everyone always asks what the the kits look like so you're going to start by threading your needle. So you're going to take two arms length of thread. So I'll show you guys the way that I thread the needle. Everyone kind of has their own technique, but I feel like this one or this way works best for me. So you're just going to take your thread and then you're going to pinch it until you see just a little bit peeking through. And then you're going to line that little part up with the hole of the needle. And there you go. So I usually get it on the first try doing it that way. You don't have to lick it or anything. <laughs> and then you're going to divide your thread into half. So you have your two ends on one end and then you have your needle. It's kind of like doubled. You'll have like a double thread. Then just line those up and tie a double, triple knot. Whichever one you want to do. I usually just do double knots. They seem to hold pretty well. Alright, so now we have the double knot. And we can get started. Yes, but you're going to have to cut your fabric in half. So this is the fabric that you're going to do all of your beadwork on. So cut that in half. So you're going to start by placing your crystal in the middle of your fabric. And then you're always gonna start from the back. So you're gonna poke a hole in the back. Um, I'm just gonna poke it right. So I just poke my needle through and then I put my crystal through it like that. And then it's centered so I'm happy. So I'm gonna pull my needle all the way through. And then I'm just gonna poke slightly above and then you're just gonna poke your needle just slightly above the gem because you're gonna secure it there's two holes so there's one at the top and one at the bottom so you're gonna secure each hole like about twice and then i'm just gonna poke the needle sometimes you're gonna poke around a couple times which is fine you're gonna want to get it closest to the crystal as possible and then just pull that and then you can go through the hole. And then you're going to secure the bottom. So I just poked right at the very bottom but close to the crystal. And then you're going to go through the hole and pull it out again. I'm going to do that one more time. And then we will begin. So you just needed the first needle for this part. And then now you're going to thread your second needle. And then we're going to st start the, the two needle technique. So, so now we're going to start doing our beadwork. So I brought my thread just slightly away from the gem, just right at the bottom. 
And I'm gonna start with my reds. So there's eight reds, so I'm gonna put eight reds on to my first needle. Two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna, still working with your first thread and first needle, you're gonna put those beads on. And then you're just going to put the needle off to the side. And this is where your second needle and thread comes in. So you're going to want to thread your needle with the same length. Okay, my needle is threaded. So this part is where we're going to learn the two needle technique. So your left, or I guess my left hand, because I'm right handed. So my left hand, so my less dominant hand is going to hold on to the thread where the beads are on and it's just gonna kind of be like a guiding hand. You're gonna like use this hand to move the beads and place them where you'd like them to go. So I'm just gonna place it there. And then this, my right hand is going to be kind of doing all of the threading and like all the stitching. So you gotta have both hands here. Um, it is a little uncomfortable at first, but you'll kind of find a way to wrap the string around and you'll find a way that's comfortable for you to hold um, the beads with this with your left hand. I love this technique because I feel like I can lay my beads so much more precise and I just love the finished outcome. They just, if you look, the beads can just be so symmetrical. I do do the one needle technique, but the two needle is definitely my favorite. So I'm gonna teach you guys my favorite. So we're gonna start, so I have my second needle on my right hand. We're gonna go behind the thread. So you're just gonna poke what you're aiming for. So there's the two beads right there. You're gonna aim to get it in between those two beads, whether it's a little bit below or over, it doesn't matter. I always go from the inside. So I like where my needle is right now and I'm gonna, Pull this needle all the way through. And then you're going to stick your, your second thread is gonna go over your first thread. So you're gonna go in between the thread. So you're just going over the thread that is has the beads on it. So watch, we're gonna pull that through. Try and do this slowly so everyone, so you can see. So there you go. So it's just laying on top of the other thread. Then you're just gonna pull that in. Then you're gonna go onto your next bead. You can poke around a few times until you're happy with the spot. I do all the time. Um, okay, there we go. So now I'm in between the second and the third bead. I'm gonna pull that all the way through. You can always look in the back, make sure you're pulling your thread all the way through. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the thread. Okay, so now we're going to go in between, oops, the third and the fourth bead. Then it's just gonna go over top of that thread and in between. So you're just basically going in between the beads and then over the thread. In between the beads and over the thread. And I like to tack down every bead. So if you look at the gem, there's this line. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a line. And then, so you're just gonna try and get your beads up until that point. So I'm gonna add one more bead so it um, hits the middle point of that line. So I'm actually two, four, I'm gonna be doing nine red beads. One more to tack down, so I'm just gonna add some yellows. And the yellows you're just gonna want to reach the very top.
placing them a bit tighter, close to each other, which is, they're both fine. Okay, now I have one more to tack down, so I'm just gonna add some yellows. And the yellows you're just gonna want to reach the very top, whether it's eight, nine, or 10 beads. I got two, four, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna just see where eight takes me. Oh. So sometimes your thread will want to go in between the wrong, um, in between, yeah, the wrong two beads. So all I do is I like pull up and then it loosens it. So then you can kind of then push your beads in. There's just a bunch of little tricks that you will learn along the way. So I've gotten my first row done. And I just have like a couple loose beads and I'm just gonna quickly show how to end off a row. So you're gonna take your, your needle and just put it through the, the first couple of beads. Oh, it's stuck on the edge. Okay, then we're just gonna pull that and then that'll secure, it'll connect the whole row together. Then I'm just gonna take my and I'm just gonna take my needle and just go over those last couple of beads. Pull that. And then once you went over the last bead, I'm just on the last bead right now, then this needle will be in the back. And then you're also going to bring the other needle. You're just going to poke it close to a bead and then pull that all the way through. And then you finished your first row of beads. So when you finish the when you finish a row of beads, you're going to make sure both of your threads are in the back. That way you can kind of start fresh. And then we're gonna continue on and we're gonna start the rhinestone bending. So now we're gonna start our rhinestone bending. So um this said so there's a smaller rhinestone bending and there's a larger one so the first one is the smaller one they're so shiny okay so the first little stitch can kind of be a little bit hard to get on but once you get that first little stitch on then it gets pretty easy so i like to do it on the more flat or the more straight edges like I definitely don't want to start on the more curvy parts and that's because it'll lay a bit funny so you just in this part you're just gonna need one of your needles I typically like to use my longer one but either one will do so it's gonna be the same technique as your two needle stitch in the sense that so there's a little chain in between each of these little rhinestones and you're just gonna thread over it to secure it down you're gonna go under and over so let's get the first one done what you can do is just kind of poke beside you just poke beside the row of beads and then you can put the rhinestone banding beside it. it. Might be the easiest way to do it. Then you're just gonna go over. So 
So my rhinestone binding kind of lost its place, but I'm just going to move it back in between those two stitches. Okay, so we're just going to pull that thread and then lay it between the first and the second gem. And then you're just going to go, sometimes again, you're going to have to poke around a couple times. Oh, I just pulled that one out of it. Just pull that. And we're just going to do that all the way around. One poke, two pokes. I kind of got it <laughs> where I wanted it on the third poke. Takes a lot, lots of poking around, but you'll kind of start to get the gauge of where where your needle is gonna pop out of. Done my rhinestone banding. So you're gonna cut your rhinestone banding. You're gonna kind of just eyeball and see which one you want cut. Mommy. Hi, baby. Oh. And sometimes there's gonna be a gap there, which is fine. Like it's not gonna link up perfectly. This one links up pretty nicely, but sometimes I have like a bit of a gap and that's totally fine too. And then once you cut it, you're just gonna finish securing them down. And then you'll be on to your next row of beads. Show how to tie off a piece of thread. So this one's getting pretty small. They're both getting kind of small. But the next row is the rhinestone banding and then we're gonna cut it out. So you'll only need one piece, one needle. So I'll just pick my bigger one and leave it. And then, so I'm gonna tie off my smaller thread. So you're just gonna make sure it's in the back. So I just tie a knot and then I use my nail and I just hold it to the base. And then I pull. So it kind of pushes the knot down to the base. And I'm gonna do, I usually do two or three depending if they overlap on each other. Like if they overlap on each other, I'll just do two. But if they are not overlapping, I'll do three. So that's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna cut that one off. Make sure I cut the right one. There we go. And now we just have one more. And we're gonna start our last row before we cut it. And that's gonna be the larger rhinestone matting. So I'm gonna start, um, where's my needle? There we go. Now we're done our four rows. So we have the two rows of the beads and two rows of the rhinestone. We're gonna tie off the string. So I already tied one of my string off. Um, so I'm just gonna tie off my last one. So I like to just like hold my knot down with my nail. Pull it to the base and tuck away. So now we're gonna cut out our beadwork. So you're gonna be careful not to cut your knots because they're at the edge, some of them. So let's be very careful. I, sometimes I'll just like hold on to the strings and pull them inwards as I cut around. So you wanna get fairly close, but not too close because you gotta be careful not to cut out any of your stitches. Yeah, so I'm gonna get in there really close. There's a knot right here. Whoa, what you doing? So I have my backing here. I'm gonna put 
the beadwork on the outside and the backing on the outside. So when you It's okay, I just cut some of the string, but <laughs> just be extra careful not to cut any of the knots. Okay, there we go, we have this part done. Now we're gonna attach an Okay, so now we have the earring, so I'm just gonna create two slits, one, two, in the back, so we can um, put on our earring clip. So it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna tuck away most of it behind behind your fabric. So what I do is I just fold it in half. And then you're gonna kind of use your earring clip to measure where you want it. So you're gonna have like a smaller slit for the, the part that's gonna go in your ear and then the other part for the clip. So you can just kind of eyeball it. So this first little slit is going to be for the top part and then now I'm just going to, now I have one slit so I'm just going to, I'm going to need another slit about here. So I pull that one more time. <laughs> Should do it. So you're gonna take your earring. I always start from the bottom, so I have my earring. It's opened, so you might get it and it's closed. So just open it up, and then feed. Starting through the back, just feed the clip through. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it in a little bit. There we go. So that part's in, and then now the little earring popped in too. So you have that part all done. Now what I like to do is I, it's not necessary, but I like to put a little bit of glue just to kind of like glue my knots down. Um, I just have a theory that that's gonna just let these earrings last a bit longer if they're worn a lot. I just make sure you Again, you don't have to do that step. I know I didn't put any glue in the kids. I'm just gonna cut off this extra little piece. Okay, now that that's all done, now you're gonna do the edging. So you're gonna need to thread, um, make sure you have a fairly long piece, like a full like two arms length for your edging. So you're gonna thread just one needle. You won't need to all the way around other than the colors changing. So I already have my needle threaded. You're gonna start with a brand new piece. Have it like a decent size. You don't wanna have a short one cause you would, it's not very fun to have to thread your needle halfway through your edging. So we're gonna feed the needle through the inside of the backing. That way your little thread can hide. And you can just tuck that little piece of thread in there. And then there you go. So now it's kind of like it's hidden. And I'm just going to do one little loop. So I'm just going to go through the, the foundation, like the white fabric. And I'm going to pull my needle through. I'm not going to go through the, the backing, the black piece, just the white piece. And I'm just going to create like a little loop. That way when you start your edging, your needle is starting from like the middle. So yeah, it's in between. So for the first part of the edging, this little thread, I can just cut it and it's just sticking out. So only for the first step, you're gonna use three beads. And then after that, all the way around, you're just gonna add two beads on. So just the first one, we're adding three. And then you're going to put that all the way down. So we have our three beads. Now I'm just gonna go like a beads width. Oh, I wanna go on the red side. So we're gonna bead all the red on this side. So we just wanna go like a beads width down. And then you're gonna go through the white and the black. And then you're gonna 
pull that thread all the way through. Don't pull it like super tight. Just have it a little tiny bit loose. And then you're gonna take your needle and you're just gonna go through that last bead. So you're just going through the one bead and then you're gonna pull it through and it should create like a little triangle. There we go. There's your little triangle. And then you can pull that tight. So there was your three beads and now we're just going to add two beads. And, it was, and you'll see, <clears throat> oh, you'll see that it'll create another little triangle. So we're just gonna go like a beads width apart. And then we have, we're just gonna go through that last bead. Just the one bead, not, the, not two, just one. Okay, hopefully you can see. So I'm just going through the one. Then we're gonna pull that thread all the way through. And then you can pull it tight. Way around. I have just a little bit more to go. So I just wanted to show everyone how to finish it off. So I'm gonna keep going. So I just got two beads on my thread. Same thing that I've been doing all the way around. I'm gonna go through that bead. Okay, now we're just going to add one last bead to kind of connect that little gap there. And I'm gonna use a black bead. It's more on the black side than the red side. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it through the red bead. I'm not going to go through the fabric quite yet, so I'm just going to bring that through. Oops. Okay, so it's now all connected, looking beautiful. And then I'm just going to go put my needle through. Um, yeah, through the white fabric and then the backing, the back fabric, and then your needle. Actually, I'm gonna poke it so I can kind of get it closer to the edge. There we go. Oh, so it's kind of close to the edge. So I'm gonna pull that through. And now we're gonna tie two knots and we're just about done. So the way I like to control my knots is I pull my needle through and then I push the loop all the way to the base and then I'm just gonna use my nail and I'm gonna hold that so the knot will... So there we go, we got one knot down. I'm gonna double knot it, pull it tight. So I'm just gonna loop my needle in and then I'm going to use my nail just to kind of hold that knot there. And there we go. So it overlapped. So there's a nice double knot. So what I like to do is, so we have this little, well, it's kind of a big knot. This big knot just sticking out. So I'm going to put my needle I'm gonna try and weave it, well not weave it, I'm just gonna try and push the needle in between the white and the black. So I just push it and then I'm gonna, it's gonna pop out somewhere. And you're gonna have to really tug at it. Try and get it out. There we go. And then that's gonna kind of hide that knot a little bit. So you can still see the knots 